ranking the Champions League favourites. We've now had the quarterfinals, first legs, so we've seen all of the eight teams that are remaining in the competition. What do we think? Who are the favourites? Andy, I'm going to start with you first. Any big takeaways and any real teams that you're like, oh, okay, this is theirs to lose now. They are the red-hot favourites to win the Champions League this season. Yeah, I, I think what we learned is that we already knew uh, about this Champions League quarterfinals when we went into it. We talked about it a few weeks ago when the draw was made, and we knew, obviously, Manchester City, Bayern Munich was going to be a massive, massive tie in the quarterfinals, probably a little bit too early given the way that these two team seasons uh, have gone this season. It felt like a semifinal or a final-type matchup, uh, but Manchester City just made it look so incredibly Easy in the Champions League, by the way. In the Champions League, they made it look very easy. They didn't make it complicated or difficult for themselves in the Champions League. They just breezed right through 3 0 in the first leg. And so I, I don't know how you look at them or you look at anybody else and say that's the favorite. It, it has to be Manchester City at this point. You talk about a team having something, you know, having it almost in their hands and it's theirs to lose. I know Real Madrid won it last year and they looked very solid against Chelsea. But it just feels, and I know I predicted it, and so I want it to happen now. I want to, I want to call the Champions League winner for the third year in a row. <laughs> Not that I'm keeping track. But it just feels like this has to be the year. The way that they did that against Bayern, nobody does that to Bayern. Nobody. And they made it look easy. They really did. Nick, do you concur with that with Man City or Real Madrid beating Chelsea very comfortably? Their pedigree, their experience, they're the defending champs. Do you buy into that? Uh, as them being the favourites. And obviously, they're matched up right now with the results in the first legs to square off in the semi-final, Man City, Real Madrid. And it's hard to say the winner's not going to come from those two teams. Is that fair to say? Because I'm going with that. I think it's going to be one of Real Madrid or Man City. Yeah, I mean, I buy them as as the second favourite. I, I can't really get past Man City right now. Uh, Rodri looks like the best player in the world. <laughs> at that, I mean, I know we talk about strikers more often as the best player in the world, but this guy is absolutely controlling the game. And when you consider the fact that it's really four center backs, <laughs> yeah. two wingers, two attacking mids, Holland and Rodri, um, it is something that teams are having a lot of trouble dealing with. It. The Diaz look great behind him. Ederson looks sharp as well. So while it's easy to talk about Holland and De Bruyne's crosses and Grealish, who is literally in the form of his life um to me rodri is 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 a piece that i thought we were going to see a little bit more of that from joshua kimmich or or leon goretzka excuse me um and we're not i mean it, it was one way traffic for the most part yeah that three two four one formation was sort of yeah john stones and others hybrid fullbacks it's just guardiola once again just showing off he can do it any way he wants to and you know, sometimes, Andy, I guess with, with City, um, they overcomplicate things, but this they've got it right this time, it feels like. They, they're, they're hitting the stride. They are in the best form of the season at the perfect time as well. So is there any way you can see them slipping up? Because even if Haaland goes down with an injury again, Alvarez is there to come in, and um, I, he still will give them a great focal point up top. So I'm struggling to see... Yep. Unless there's a huge dip in form, what's going to go wrong for Man City? Aside from just being completely unable to finish chances for 90 or 180 minutes, I mean, that that is the only path to Manchester City out of the Champions League this season to me. Because it, as, as good as Real Madrid are and as experienced as they are, uh, I have questions about them defensively when they have to actually defend for prolonged periods. And that's the big difference to the, between these two teams to me. And then Pep showed it again in, in the first leg, moving a kanji around on the back line, you know, having John Stones in there. It's just, it's so defensively solid right now that it gives so much freedom to everybody for like, he, he has found the balance for so long, especially at Manchester City. The balance has been off with his teams. It's either been a little too defensive when they didn't have the center forward or is a little too all-out attacking when it was a lot of kind of uh, attacking midfielders and, and they just played very, very fluid. The balance was never there, but it's there now. They defend as well as they attack. They attack as well as they defend. And to have the talent they have in the team playing in that way it just makes it so incredibly difficult to beat them, uh, you know, on a day, let alone over two legs in, in a tie in the Champions League. So, uh, not to sound like a broken record, but I just keep coming back to them. 
Nick, uh, when it comes to the other Premier League team remaining, Chelsea, obviously losing 2-0 at Real Madrid, going down to 10 men. Defended okay towards the end and actually had a couple of chances. Mason Mount uh, with a, was stopped by a big block by Rudiger uh, late on. And in the first half, Sterling, again, Courtois denied him with a great save down low. So there's going to be chances for Chelsea. You feel like maybe in the second leg, if they can score early in the first half against Real Madrid, and there's only one goal in it, then they, they could potentially take this to extra time. But um, do you feel like they have much of a chance now that Real Madrid are just doing what Real Madrid do best and did throughout the entire tournament last year to go and win it? They just kept finding some, some from somewhere, some from their playbook in previous years that Modric or Kroos or Benzema... Uh, and then relied on Rodrigo and Vinicius Jr. as well, different moments. Someone just always seems to be popping up for Real Madrid when they need him to do something, right? So kind of fear for Chelsea in that second leg. I do. I, I, I mean, granted, they'll, there's a lot of... There are a lot of talking points that that could lead you to believe, you know, that's going to be in London. It's going to be all these great opportunities for them. Um, but the fact that Frank Lampard already showcased that and the, the post-match press conference was very much Ole's at the wheel. Oh, there's so much magic at Stamford Bridge. It's never over. Well, what are you going to do, buddy? I don't know. It's never over. Like, I I really don't understand what they did. And, and I don't understand the – it was kind of, I guess, a 5-3-2 at times as well. Um, it seemed – they got some positive chances out of it, but it seemed like a negative plan. And, you know, Carlo Ancelotti, he, Carlo kind of said it too. A man who's coached Frank Lampard, right? He said, hey, look, I've been doing this a long time. And Chelsea's a good team, but I think we really know what to do. And it never really felt, even when the chances came to Real, that they were really troubled by anything Chelsea was doing to them. That's fair enough. Um, what about the three Italian teams? Obviously, Napoli... Uh, losing 1-0 AC Milan uh, in the first leg. Um, have to take him back to Naples, so I think that's a big advantage there. Um, and then, obviously, Inter Milan uh, getting on top of Benfica there, which may be a bit of a surprise. So do we think, Andy, any chances there for the Italian teams on that side of the bracket? Um, because Napoli were the obvious choice, but maybe we've kind of yeah. done Inter and AC Milan a, a bit of disservice right now because they're not exactly flying in Serie A, are they? No, they're not. A bit of a disappointing display from Napoli, maybe in the. I know they were away, yada yada yada. Uh, but but the the hype around this team this season has been not just some of the most entertaining football to watch, which they've been for a number of years, but now it is very very effective. It's very very, um, you know, it's dominant in Serie A. They're nearly twenty points clear at, at the top of the league at this time of the season. They, you know, we're not. They were missing Oshman for this one, right? So that was the big yep. key for them going away. Sure. And, and I, I think that lends to a, a slightly bigger point as well in the Champions League or clubs that are in the Champions League. The best team seems to win the domestic league every year in whatever league you have. But when we get to the Champions League and especially the knockout rounds, doesn't it feel like it's the team with the best star talent that is always there at the end? You can function over 38 games as a whole team and having the best system and knowing how to play is going to get you there. But you get into knockout competition, uh, even over two legs, and it's the best talent at the top of the roster. And, and to me, it looks like that's Napoli still. And so I would expect them to come back and, and make the comeback in the second leg and be, the, be one of the semifinalists. But at the same time, AC Milan, very, very uh, workmanlike in that first leg and and prove that they can kind of control a game a little bit more than we had seen from them in the Champions League so far this season. So uh, I think whoever comes out of that one, I think is going to be the finalist on the other side opposite of Manchester City and Real Madrid. Yeah, robust is a good word to sum up yes. AC Milan right now, right? Just bend but don't break and they just have that mentality. It feels like a good mixture of experience in that side. So that'll be tough for Napoli, but yeah, I think they... They're the team, I think, that could cause Man City some problems that they do go head to head in the final and just mm. test that defense a little bit. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, Nick, have you changed your mind about who you think is going to win it? Because I, I still think Manchester City are going to win this um, Champions League this season. I think this is about time. So, any any changes in your mind, mate? No, I'm I'm with you guys on Man City. And the only thing is, again, it's it's small sample size. It's not unlike a World Cup game. It's not over two legs. I would bet on Man City against anyone, anyone in the world over two legs. But it's it's one game, and 
Um, you know, it's interesting. I think Inter is kind of the, the tricky one here. AC Milan, the thing that blew my mind yesterday, they've lost to Napoli, I think, twice this year. They've lost to Inter twice this year. So, of course, they went out and beat <laughs> Napoli. But uh, I think Inter Milan, Man City is is where we're looking at right now. There you go. Uh, Andy, you got a prediction for the final? City Napoli, I, I think it's what everybody wants. Very, yeah. very contrasting <laughs> styles would make for, you know, a great David Goliath story in the sense of the financial power. And then just once the game kicks off, the stylistic difference, Napoli trying to play wide open the way that they do and City trying to really control and slow the game down and play still some of the most beautiful stuff you've ever seen. Uh, it, it would be interesting to, to say the least. So we're all going for Man City to win the Champions League. So... Pep Guardiola will finally deliver on what he's always said would be his biggest promise and his biggest task at Man City and the whole reason he was brought to the club to win the Champions League. So let's see if they can do it. Head over to Pro Soccer Talk on NBCSports.com. We'll have all the analysis, team news, preview, how to watch information ahead of the second leg of those quarterfinals. We'll keep you updated with the Champions League through now to the final in Istanbul and what an occasion that will be. Let's see who makes it, but we all think Man City right now are red-hot favourites to be crowned the champions of Europe for the very first time in their history. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. For even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you over there.